Synopsis of the Books of the Bible. 1 Kings. By J. N. Darby. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. 2 Timothy 3 verses 16 and 17. Synopsis of the Books of the Bible. By John Nelson Darby. 1 Kings, chapters 14 to 16. Jeroboam's neglect of God's warning, its results on himself and his house. In spite of this testimony, Jeroboam perseveres in his sin. The only one of his sons in whom any piety is seen dies, and the judgment of God is pronounced upon his house. Judah's condition after Solomon's death, constant war between the two kingdoms. Judah having walked in all sorts of iniquity also, during the reign of Rehoboam, Jerusalem is taken, and all the riches which Solomon had amassed became the prey of the Egyptians. Abijam, his son, follows no better course. There was constant war between the two kingdoms, the sad story, so often renewed, of man placed in the enjoyment of God's blessing, and the effect of his fall. In what a condition do we see the kingdom of God's people, and the house of David itself, recently so glorious? Transgression against Jehovah and hastening doom. A.S.A., pious himself and faithful to Jehovah, pressed by the power of Basha, king of Israel, to have dethroned the house of Jeroboam, seek that help from the Syrians which he did not know how to find in God. The family of Basha falls, like that of Jeroboam had done and the chief captains contend together for the throne, which remains at last in the hands of Ahab's father. Ahab added to the sin of his predecessors the worship of Baal, the god of his idolatrous wife, and, in the enormity of his transgressions against Jehovah, he went beyond all the kings of Israel that were before him. But in the midst of all this moral ruin, the word of God reaches those who violate it, and Joshua's prophetic judgment upon whosoever should rebuild Jericho is fulfilled in the family of Heel, the Bethlight. Not only are the ways and government of God manifested in full vigor, however great his patience with a rebellious people, but the energy of the king's iniquity, in the presence of God's long suffering, gives occasion for a testimony remarkable in proportion to the evil which made it necessary. The reign of Ahab was the occasion of the testimony of the prophet Elijah. Israel, at that time, was hastening to its doom. But, whatever their iniquity may be, God does not smite a people who have forsaken his ways, until he has sent them a testimony. He may chastise them previously, but will not definitively execute his judgment upon them. The testimony of the prophets in Judah unaccompanied by miracles. The character of the testimony deserves particular attention here. In Judah, the prophets, who bore testimony in the midst of an order of things which God himself had established, performed no miracles. They dwell upon the people's sin and put them in mind of the law of Jehovah, his ordinances, and the obedience due to him. They proclaim the advent of the Messiah and the future blessing of Israel, but, the system in the midst of which they give this testimony being still owned by God, they perform no miracles.